Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitsa Lab and in this particular video we're going to again be taking a take on Defendu, the World War II fighting art, and we're going to be looking at the face smash. Now the face smash was admittedly a lot more popular on the other side of the world with American soldiers and shock troops on the Pacific Islands and a lot of the Fairbairn protégés went and taught this particular type of technique. But the face smash, if you imagine in the kind of Defendu World War II combatives world, we've got tiger claw strikes, so long range palm strikes in here. The fingers are always incidental. Bam! You get the concussion and hopefully you take a bit of eye with you. You've got your chin jabs, hyper close range, rocket the head back types of attack. But you've also got where the element of surprise you know, the element of deception isn't really on your side, it's the face smash. He's running at me, I'm running at him, both trying to fuck each other up. The face smash. Essentially, it's like throwing a ball. It's throwing a ball at the opponent. The strike is coming down, like the trajectory of a cat. When a cat's waking you up, it boops you like this. Same with the face smash. So we're still hitting with the hard base of the palm. Straight from here, boom, think of it like a swimming motion, boom, 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 okay, so at speed, boom, comes straight down the opponent, and it's a cycling blow, and what I mean by that is it hits and it resets, boom, okay, so you can do multiple versions of this or transition to something else, but the anatomy of a face mash is a swimming or ball throwing style overhand motion. The strike comes down, down the opponent. Some benefits of that are, the head is a lot more accustomed to yes, nodding, than it is to going back. You've got very good strong muscles that prevent your head snapping back very easily, otherwise we'd break our necks all the time. But the moment of our head coming down, if you put your chin down to your chest fast, ugh, and you feel it, it's a kind of sick, horrible feeling, isn't it? If you try and launch your head back violently, there are muscles there that go, whoa, 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 you don't want to do that. So going backwards, the body resists it a little bit. Going forwards, it's a free-for-all. So the face mash, when we swim it in, when we swim it in, it puts the head down. And that can happen very fast. As we all know, if I can move the head fast, I can shake the brain, which means I can knock him out. So the face mash from up front, bam, putting his head down, bam, I get massive speed and trajectory here, as well as the percussive impact of the hard bit of the hand. Bam, and this will hit him anywhere on the face, really. You know, you want to be running down the nose, down on the chin. Bam, you know, there's no great sights to this because you're winging it in but you want that quick fire nod down. An ancillary element is the rake of the fingers. Once that's hit, because you are cycling it, you are resetting it, the fingers are raking down the eye. So whilst not a, a gouge per se, it is a nasty ancillary benefit. Smash here, rake down. <laughs> Nice and nasty, nice and lovely. So again, anatomy of the face smash is using this bit of the hand, swimming it over, throwing it with full intensity like you're throwing a ball. The energy comes down to accelerate this nodding motion to get the knockout. And the fingers just add the extra bit of venom that you might need. And there are a couple of decent reasons why we go with this face smash. One, is that we can do it at extreme long range. If you imagine, I'm part of a shock troop, he's part of a shock troop, and we are clashing at speed, my ability to just throw this out there is much easier than perhaps a more scientific blow, like a chop, like a jab, like a chin jab, or any other thing. I can, I can run and face smash. That's the main benefit for me. I can run, I can run for 20 seconds at full pelt, and whoop, I can just fire that straight into a person. I don't need to think about it, I don't really need to aim it. I can charge and run, and 
and face smash. So give that a go. And if you've got a bit more room in your dojo than I have, give it a running jump. Run at that person. Whoa! Face smash them right there. It's a lovely technique. So it can be done in extreme range as you advance towards the target. Even if I'm not running, I can take a very long step and hit him with this before he thinks he's in hitting range. And you have to be quite, you have to be very close up for a chin jab. You have to be quite close up for an edge of hand blow. For a tiger claw, you have kind of what you would feel is an extreme distance. But your face mash, because of how long it comes, this long sweeping arc, this comes from really far out of left field, which does surprise many people. So even at a long range, if I know the threat's on, why wait for him to get here for me to begin? I could start my face mash from here and get that in. Straight from there. So it's a great long range attack, whether I'm running at him full pelt, and I use my energy and force then to keep driving him. So I can run and hit with it relatively easily. I can run, face smash him and keep running. And the guy behind me can deal with him. Doesn't matter if I need momentum, then the chin smash as opposed to the chin jab is something which has great utility for it. As well as hurting the eyes, the concussive power, the knockdown power. For me, the range in which it's thrown is a great tool for that. You can throw it from closer range. So if you're up high and you're capitulating, but you're up close, so your hands are high and you're capitulating, you can smash with this, but it doesn't have the same force. If I'm at this range, elbows, headbutts, knees, gouges, the traditional chin jab is much better. Although you can do that motion, you can smash. So again, it's just up high, chin smash and drag. So it is an option, but for me, it's a shock troop tactic, running at speed, whoa, take that opponent out of the game, or in a one-on-one -on -one situation from your verbal fence, or from your physical fence, attack him before he thinks he's attackable. Whoa. Following which you can follow up with whatever nasty shit you want to do. So it triggers a pretty decent knockout, because it works on the yes principle, which means the head goes down very fast. It can be done at extreme long range. It's very safe on the hand. Even if the opponent has a helmet on, it's not going to be crippling towards the hand. So that's useful for a wartime system. It works even on a helmeted opponent. So you've got fingers in the eyes, extreme long range, safety for the hand, and it gives you the right forward bodily momentum to crash in and do other stuff. It puts your body on the offense. As soon as you swim that in, all your chips are in. And when you're fighting, all of your chips need to be in. And then just an extra ancillary benefit for the face smash is that because it is a cycling technique, that even at range, if I smash this in, it's natural for it to work in circles. And because it works in circles, it means that in an instance where I might have a duty belt or a tactical belt, again, I've just put this on for an example, so don't look at the kit with any degree of focus. It's just to hold it up while I talk to you. When I smash that in, it gives me the opportunity to draw something, let's say it's this knife, and smash something in. So, chin smash, draw, stab. Chin smash, draw, stab. Now you'll notice I'm putting in something on a half beat here, which is my chin smash is coming at range. Oh. When I'm drawing from my belt, I'm checking him here to draw in this instance the knife to plunge it in to the opponent, boom, into the neck, into any number of arteries, whatever you want to do but it can follow the exact same motion as the chin smash. Chin, uh, sorry, the face smash. Boom! Strikes down, then to rake, check, draw, attack, or indeed, yeah, I'm looking at a World War II system, face smash, check, draw, bang, 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 bang. So you've got 
all of those options available to you. Whether it's just the straightforward chin smash and run, whether it's the chin smash and continue to blitz and attack, whether it's the chin smash, check, draw and stab, or whether it's the chin smash, check, draw, make ready and fire. You've got all of those options available to you from the humble chin smash. So I really like it as a technique, very intuitive, beginner friendly, can happen face to face, which is fantastic. Sometimes we get so brought up to be able to deceive from the fence, we forget that often we might clock a threat before he's closed the distance. So why allow him the opportunity to reach me if I can get this in straight away? So again, the chin smash, a really good element of World War II combatives.